Amen, amen. If you're able to stand to your feet as we sing the congregational selection, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning again. We want to welcome everyone who's watching us on the World Wide Web. We bring greetings to you where Jesus resides at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. I'll be reading from Psalm 63. You, God, are my God, earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love, because, because of your love is better than life itself, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will fully be satis satisfied as with the riches of food. With singing in my lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the, through, through the watches of the night because you are my help. I sing in the shadows of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Those who want to kill me will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for the jackals. But the king, of, the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God will glory in him, while the mouths of the liars will be silenced. I'll be reading from the prayer list. Let us keep in prayer, Brother Gennaro, Willie Dupree, praying for the family of Brother Terry Cargill II, the family of Mother Christine, Christine Arnold, Sister Tanya Smith and family, the family of Dr. Iodelli, Brother Sean McLean Young, Reverend Marilyn Carter, Sister Camila Felder, uh, Baby Zeta Wilson, Sister Cookie Britt, Sister Glenda Moore, Brother A.J. Black, Reverend Larry Peoples, Brother Michael Stein, Sister Verlene Harris, Sister Trevett and family, Mother Emiola Peoples, Sister Leola Banks, Sister Jackie Taylor, Sister Leslie Walker, Brother Mark Childs, Sister Jewel Smith, 
Sister Sandy Mack, Mother Brenda Giles, Mother Shirley Titus, Reverend Bobby McGee, Mother Shirley Nevels, Mother Wilma Woodhouse, Sister Deborah Badley, and Sister Lynette Steele. Remember, this one day could be your name on this list. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we don't take for granted that you brought us here today, Lord. We just thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning to see another day. We ask that you forgive us for our sins and transgressions against you as we've done that already this morning. Lord, we ask that you forgive us. Then, Lord, we just want to thank you for allowing us to see another Sunday. Lord, thank you for the message. Thank you for the preacher that comes to preach. Let someone come down saying, what must I do to be saved? The most important thing you can do on this side of life. Then, Lord, I ask that you bless our country. Lord, I ask that you touch our country, touch our people. Lord, reveal to us what people have in store for us, Lord. I ask that you show it and make it plain and make it clear. You are still in control. In Jesus, who is the Christ name, we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. How many know that God is mighty? Do you know that on this morning? We thank God for being in his service one more time because he is mighty. God is great. He is everything that we need him to be. The Lord is mighty. Can y'all do me a favor and put your fists up like this? If your arms are not hurting, let's just do this this morning. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Is your name in all the earth? You set your glory above your glory above the heavens and the earth.
Blessing from you. Break me, make me. 
me, shake me, mold me. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. A blessing from you. Oh, oh, oh break me. Shake me. Make me. Mold me. My heart is ready. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. God, it's my heart's desire to receive you on today. A blessing from you. Blessing from you. A blessing from you. Break me, make me, shape me, mold me. from you a blessing from you 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 a 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 blessing from from you, a blessing from you, a blessing from you. We're blessed, 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 blessed. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. A blessing from you. Oh, break the music. My hands. My heart is ready. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Yeah. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Whoa, my hands. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready. My heart is ready to receive. A blessing from you. A blessing. 
a blessing from you. 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 Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. 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 God, all we need are your blessings. God, all we need are your blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, Mount Zion. Just want to welcome you to the house of the Lord this morning. We are continuing to pray for the families who have lost loved ones. Continuing to pray for the family of Terry Cargill, the whole family. Nephew of Sterling Head, Sean McLaren Young, who was shot this week but is recovering. And we are continuing to pray for the family of Gennaro. And we see um, Sister Irisi and Brother Robert here with us this morning. Those services will be held on Friday, August 30th at 11 o'clock a.m. at Mount Zion. Please continue to keep the family in prayer. The Mount Zion Missions Ministry is preparing our book, scholarships for college students please make sure you if you are youth in college that you see me and put your name on the list thank you so much reminder we are also looking for members to join our ushers and our nursing ministry so um we will have those meetings in september it was funny after we said the ushers the nurses are like what about the nurses but we are recruiting for all ministries at mount zion choir and praise team rehearsals um, the Mount Zion Music Ministry will rehearse weekly on Tuesdays. The praise team at 6.30, choir at 7.30. We look forward to all who are able to join us. What else we have? The church picnic is right around the corner. And everyone should have received an email, but we're looking for all members to come out and join us for our picnic on August 31st. Um, please see Skylar, Deacon Skylar, for your T-shirt and um, sign up for side dishes with Sister Maria and our mother's ministry will be handling the desserts and see Sister Lloyd. Let's see, now we have a recap of the bowling, which I'm gonna have Sister Deborah come on down. It's from what I heard, Mount Zion closed down that bowling alley with the lights went off as soon as we walked out the building. We're gonna have Sister Deborah give the rest of the report. Amen. Good morning. What a time, what a time we had yesterday. The men's ministry and the women's ministry got together for a wonderful time at the bowling in Westchester. And uh, we want all the men stand, all the women who were there to stand. Uh, Cedric is over the men's ministry. Thank you to our sister Tisa over the women's ministry and all of those who came out to support us yesterday. We had a great, great time. And so I just thought that, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a person who, if um, I have to have a defeat, I am willing to explain <laughs> the men of Zion won the bowling yesterday. <laughs> So let's give them a round of applause. Amen. Amen. And so when I got home, I started thinking, okay, you know what? You know, I, I know that men, you know, we have to kind of, you know, give them a little something to pat them on the back for, you know, all that they do. And so I went out and got these little trophies. Now, they're not real bowling trophies or anything, but they're some little trophies for you. And so I wanted to give some recognition to a person who is, uh, we call him the big London clock in, in Great Britain. Anybody know what that name is? Ben. So we're going to give this trophy to Mr. Ben. He did a great job yesterday. Come on down, Ben. Could you come get your trophy? Look, come get your trophy. <laughs> yeah, he's got the door. And then we want to give acknowledgement also uh, we have uh, a newbie uh, amongst us, and he's a 
tall tower as well, and we're so glad to have him because he's always here and he is so faithful to everything. He comes out to, of course, to church as well as he comes out to any outings that we have. We want to give this to Jordan. He did a great job. And then we have this next individual. And this next individual, oh, wow, when he got out there at first, you know, he was, you know, saying, well, I'm just going to bowl one, one bowl. I'm not going to do too much. And he's going to lay low. But after he got out there and started hitting all the strikes and started doing such a great job, he is our director as well as he is a songbird in our choir. We're going to give this to Namaye for, for his great job that he did. <laughs> And then we have this award here. I hope he didn't step out on me here. I saw he, uh, but we call this person, he is a lefty and he can bowl. We need to go ahead and put him on the Pro Bowl. And we call him the Steph Curry of bowling. And that is Skylar Smith. <laughs> Thank you to everyone, and we would like to see, anytime we have any of these outings, everyone we want, because you could be just a cheerleader and supporter, even if you don't, you know, maybe play these events or anything, come out and support the rest of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Deborah. I just want to make sure if you're able to attend the candle and you need a scholarship, please see us. We will take care of that. So sign up with us after church. At this time, are there any visitors at Mount Zion today? We would like you to stand. Please stand if you're a visitor. We see some visitors. We just want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us today. We um, know we're going to have a blessed service. Our ushers have a card for you. And if you love the Lord today, if you love the Lord today, just say it out loud that I love Jesus. Oh, hold on, hold on. Y'all bring it down a little bit. I didn't, I didn't hear nobody. My hearing's a little bad. I, I, did y'all hear anybody? I, I'm trying to get everybody, trying to get everybody to say I love Jesus. That's the line. The line is, I love Jesus. Now, if you don't, you can be quiet. But if you do, I want you to shout it out. I love Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, the praise team just got through singing about receiving a blessing. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to receive. Now, worship is about giving. 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 I want us to get that word. Giving. Worship is the people of God giving to God all of the homage, the adoration, the praise that belongs to him. If Mount Zion, you want to receive from God. First order of business in receiving is giving God, to God, what he deserves from you. And we want God I understand. I know why y'all are here, ushers. I, I want you to know I didn't forget that. 
We want God to receive and accept what we offer to him. We therefore want to ask of God that as we prepare our gifts that he would receive what we offer to him. And we want to offer it in such a way that we are making an offer that he will receive. Would you stand and pray with me? God, we are your people. We stand before you now to bring our gifts to you. Consecrate us. Consecrate our offerings that you require of us to bring and place them before you. We pray today, God, that what we have to offer, that you would receive it from us. In the name of Jesus, bless the giver, bless the gift, in Jesus' name. All who agreed, said amen. 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 The ushers are coming. You may be seated. <laughs>
His name is excellent. And can I tell you, Mount Zion, that now I don't know what you're waiting for. If, you, if you're waiting uh, to delay your shout, the Spirit is moving right now. So while the Spirit is moving, get your shout. As they used to say in Shreveport, while the train is at the station, Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and shout, shout now, his name is the excellent, can I get a witness here, can I get a witness here? Somebody ought to give him some glory. Somebody ought to give him some praise. He's worthy. Yeah. Is he worthy? Bring it down just a little. Let me welcome you. If you're watching by social media platforms, welcome to Mount Zion Baptist Church of God in Christ, holy, sanctified, apostolic church. <laughs> We all of that. We got a little bit of all of that. <laughs> so we a little bit Baptocostal today. Amen. How we bless the name of God. Thank you, Mount Zion, for allowing me to come back one more time. One more time. I want to thank those who have come alongside me today. I have a group of people that we have labeled them as the paraclete group. Because in the Bible, you know, a paraclete is one who comes alongside another to be of aid and assistance and they that's what they do when I'm when I'm preaching in the city of Los Angeles and sometimes it just may be Los Angeles County they they will come alongside and give us little support to the preacher and I think that's mighty fine 
Amen. And, and y'all had them to stand already, but I want them to stand to let so you'll know they with me. Amen. I want the paracletes to stand one more time. Y'all stand up again. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you too. Amen. This is a pair. Y'all give them a better hand than that, my time. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. So this one with the bushy hair, that's my wife right there. Amen. <laughs> and that tall young man, that's our, that's our uh, youngest uh, son. Amen. Say, he might look old enough to be my father, but, but it's the other way around. Amen. Thank God for them here with me today. I want to bless God for this. This music ministry. Y'all, y'all cutting up here in here today. I, 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 I like y'all. Amen. 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 Thank God for you. I, I got a word for us today that's from a very familiar passage of scripture from the book of Acts chapter 3 and I want to read several of the verses from this chapter. Acts chapter 3 I want to begin at verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold, have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. Thank you for standing. And the tag I want to put on to this text is a man, a miracle, and a message. A man, a miracle, and a message. Contrary to the belief of some, these early saints, 
such as Peter and John and others of the disciples of Christ. They did not see themselves as the pioneering progenitors of a new religion that we now know as Christianity. They saw themselves as adherents to the faith that we know as, or the religion we know as Judaism. They saw themselves as adherents to Judaism who had a marked uh, difference in themselves that was their belief that Jesus of Nazareth was in fact the long awaited Messiah. That set them apart from all other Orthodox Jews. They found in the Lord Jesus Christ the long-awaited Messiah. But they still saw themselves as messianic. Jews and they showed their adherence to Judaism through what we see happening in the opening of this text I just read. We are told in the previous chapter, verse 46, that daily, daily, the disciples of Christ would go to the temple to take part in the activities that went on on a daily basis. One of those activities was daily prayer vigils that went on at the house of God three times a day. There was a prayer service at nine in the morning, there was another at 12 midday, and a third and final prayer vigil at the ninth hour or three o'clock in the afternoon. And they found themselves on a daily basis going to the house of God to participate in the prayer services. And here we have them, Mount Zion, as this chapter opens. Peter, 
and John are on their way. Yet another day to the last prayer service of the day, the ninth hour. And just before they could enter into the temple, right outside, at a gate called Beautiful, there was an ugly sight. A man, a man is at this gate. And the man at the gate, the writer of the text, the beloved physician, Dr. Luke, Dr. Luke apprises us of some information about this man at the gate. The first thing he tells us about the man is the man's situation. His situation is he's lame from birth. Can you say lame from birth? This man was born lame, which means this guy is born without the hope of being able to have any locomotion, no mobility. He is lame from birth. Can I tell you this, Mount Zion, about this guy, this man? This man at this gate is a little bit more than just a man. A little bit more. What do you mean a little bit more than just a man, preacher? I mean this man, although his personal situation is he's lame from birth, this man stands as a representative of every man born of a woman. He is a representative of every man born a son of Adam. Because all of us, every one of us up in here, right here, right now, was just like this man. Born into a situation that we were spiritually lame. And this man, this man, this man, this man, born unable to walk, he is also unable to help himself. He is without the ability to do anything about his situation. And can I tell you, that's what, that's what our situation was when we got here. We were born into a situation spiritually that we could do absolutely nothing about. We didn't do anything to be in the situation. 
except be born. Just like this man, he did nothing to precipitate his situation. He was born in it. So his situation is the first thing that Luke tells us about. He is lame from birth. And you know what? What else Luke tells us about this man's, not this man at the gate, he not only tells us about his situation, which is lame from birth. Listen, his situation has dictated his location. His location is at the gate of the temple on the outside he cannot go Mount Zion inside where the prayer service is going on because there are rules there are regulations that prohibit him from going any further than where he is located because the rules were that certain kinds of people were unable to enter into the temple of God if you were blind or lame, you couldn't go inside. Can you imagine that? The rules are of such that people who have handicaps are unable to enter the house of God. That, can I bring that to the hood? That's like saying, hey, if you are, <laughs> if you're not a Christian, you can't come inside of Mount Zion. If you are not already saved, you cannot come inside the church sanctuary. That's like Kaiser saying to sick people, if you are suffering with cancer, you can't come in here. This is a hospital, but you, you can't. Sick folks can't come in here. Only the well. But didn't you, you, you remember Jesus saying that the well man needs no physician or no doctor but it's those who are what? Sick. This man's situation has dictated his location. He could come no further than the gate outside of the Lord's house. But guess what? Guess what? On this particular day, in the text, watch the text, watch the text. On this particular day, his situation that precipitated his location put him in perfect position when Peter and John came along, the, his location put him in perfect position for him to have a, a life-changing conversation. Are y'all going to walk with me just a minute? Are you going to walk with me a minute? I can't hear y'all. Are you going to walk with me a minute? 
The man's situation precipitated his location but his location put him in perfect position to have a life-changing conversation. And in that conversation, the when well, the conversation got started, Doc, when the brother held out a cup and asked Peter and John for a monetary donation. <laughs> he held out a cup. And asked for a donation. And when he asked for that donation, the conversation got started. Peter said, look on us, brother. Look on us. And the text says, he looked. Mount Zion, Mount Zion, verse 4 Peter said, if you look in your Bible, is that word look capitalized in your Bible? Huh? To look at it quickly, let me know, is it capitalized? That's the Holy Ghost's way of saying, don't go too much further than that word. Peter, when Peter said look, he's saying a little bit more than just see us physically. He said, Peter's saying to him, hey, brother, uh, examine us. Scrutinize us. Analyze us. Investigate us. Can I tell y'all, that's a dangerous invitation for a saint to give somebody that is outside of Christ to tell them to look on us? You, do you know it's dangerous for you to tell the people on your street to look on you? Because they see you dressed up on Sunday going on your way to Mount Zion Baptist Church. It's kind of dangerous for you to tell them, look on me. <laughs> Can I tell you a story? I had I had a good friend who passed away this year. You all know his probably know his brother, uh, uh, Paul Morton, uh, who was the founding head of the full gospel movement. Paul had a brother uh, named James uh, who passed away a few, uh, maybe a year or so ago. But James, before he went to Atlanta, was pastoring in Detroit, uh, Michigan. And they had staked out some territory, Brother Beverly, that they were going to evangelize, that they were going to go from door to door, knocking on people's doors, telling them about Christ. And uh, this one sister told them, said, said Pastor, um, I think y'all made a mistake. He said, what, what is it, baby? She said, y'all gave me my own street. <laughs> he said, well, we gave you your own street for you. He said, she said, yes, sir. Y'all gave me my own street for me to go down that street. Uh, she said, I can't go on my street. All, my, all of my neighbors know me. She was saying to Pastor Martin and the evangelism team, uh, I, can't, I can't stand for my neighbors to look on me. <laughs> she was telling them, I've been cutting up <laughs> on this street and my cutting up has undermined my witness. Uh, does that happen? Well, I'm going to move on. <laughs> Peter said to the brother, look on us. Watch this. Here's why, here's why it is dangerous for a saint to give that, make that invitation to a sinner. It's right here in verse, four, verse 5. Because the text said, when Peter said, look on us, it says, and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them. Peter 
told the brother to look on us, he did. And when he did, he was still expecting to get from Peter and John what he asked for. But look what Peter said to the brother. He said, and I'm sure this was disappointing to the brother. Peter said, silver and gold. Come on, y'all know the rest of it. What did he say? <laughs> Have I? No. And then <laughs> Peter, Peter put that disjunctive conjunction. He said, such as I have. Quiet, y'all gonna help me, aren't you? All right, they, they sitting on me out there. I need y'all to help me back there. He says, but such as I have. Give I thee in the name of Jesus. What, Peter, Peter, talk to us today. When you said you don't have any silver and you don't have any gold, but such as I have, what is this stuff that you label such as I have? Well, what I mean, I'm glad y'all asked. I mean, I don't have any silver but I do have a savior. I don't have any gold, but I do have God. <laughs> Help me out here, man, somebody. I don't have any money, but I do have ministry. <laughs> Sir, I don't have a donation but I do have deliverance. And that's what you need. You don't need another donation because you out here every day. And being here every day, you are automatically getting and quite obviously you are getting donations. But none of your donations has gotten you any deliverance. You're still here every day. Same place. Same time. For the same thing. What you're getting is doing you no good. But sad today Something different is about to happen here. I don't have money, but I do have ministry for you. He says, such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. Watch this. Christ of Nazareth Rise up and walk. Now, so far we've been looking at the man. The man, the man, we saw his situation. We saw his situation. He's lame from birth. His situation demanded his location. His location put him in perfect position to have a conversation. And that conversation changes his life. Look, watch this, watch this. I told you the, the title is A Man, A Miracle. Here we go. We saw the man. Now here go the miracle. The text says, verse 7, Peter took him by the right hand and what? Lifted him up. 
and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Here we go. And he, watch this, leaping up. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. He what? Leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. Watch this. Walking, leaping, and what? Praising God. Can you say miracle? No, 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 no. You, you, you got to use your preaching voice. Come on. Can you say miracle? miracle. Well, why are you calling it a miracle, preacher? Glad you asked. If you keep on reading through the book of Acts over in the next chapter, you will discover that this brother that was at the gate this guy is better than 40 years of age. Hold on. And he was lame from birth. This brother ain't never walked a day in his life. 40 something years old. Never walked a day in his life. Now, I need help. That young man right there by you, come in, come in, come in. I need to use you a minute. Can you come help the preacher? Watch him, watch him. See how he did that? How old are you, my friend? He's 11. Ten and a half years ago, what he just did, he couldn't do. Hold on. What's your name? Hmm? This is Ethan. Ethan couldn't have done that ten and a half years ago. Now, Ethan, I want to thank you, sir. Well, high five, a brother. All right? Go back and sit. Watch. Look at Ethan. Look at Ethan. He walked out here. Now, his parents know that ten and a half years ago, before he was able to step on out like that, before he could walk, he had to learn how to sit up, sit alone, right? Before a child is able to walk, they got to crawl. They do a crawl. Some do like my baby sister did. Instead of crawling, she would slide across the floor before she walked. But however, they go through a process. Walking is a process learned over a period of time. You first learn how to sit alone. Then you learn to pull up. Then you learn how to Stand alone, and then you learn how to make them little rickety first steps. And, and the parent, you're there waiting, ready to catch your child in case of foul. <laughs> now, here's a brother. Over 40 years old, ain't never walked in 
his life. When Peter. No, keep your seat, Doc. Keep your seat. When Peter touched the brother, gave him his right hand, Peter lifted him up. And when Peter lifted him up, the Bible says his feet and ankle bones received strength. And the brother, watch this, didn't make rickety steps. His face moved of mobility. Hold on, Doc. Was a leap. The brother is all the way up to leaping. Can you say miracle? Yeah. Well, I wish I could take off right there. But we saw the man. We see the miracle. And when the miracle was seen, the people started wondering how is it that this man been out here all these years? How is it that he's up leaping and praising God? Can I tell y'all? Here's the message. Here's the message. Right here in verse 12. When Peter saw it, I'm sorry, here in verse 13, Peter said, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son, Jesus, whom y'all delivered up, denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. You killed the prince of life. Can I take off right there? Y'all took him. You took him and you hung him high. Stretched him wide. And he died on the cross. You buried him in a borrowed grave. But thank God, thank God, thank God, Sunday morning, got up with a power in his hand. That's the message, Jesus. Cause the man to get up and walk. And Mount Zion, you and I ought to take a lesson from that brother. That brother went in the temple jumping, shouting, Praising God, somebody here, somebody here, somebody here ought to help me praise him. Ah, praise him in the choir stand. Ah, praise him. Praise him because he is worthy. Can I get a witness that he is worthy? 
to be praised. I wish I could get somebody. Somebody to help me praise him. Can I get somebody that'll help me praise him? I ain't looking for all of y'all, but can I get one that know what God has done to help me praise him? Can I get two that know what he's able to do to come on and help me praise him? Can I find three that's been set free? Can I get four? No, he can open the door. Can I get five that are shout and say he's alive? Can I get six? No, your heart been fixed. Can I get seven on your way to heaven? Can I get eight that didn't wait too late? Can I get nine? No, God is on time. Can I get ten that's been born again? Can I get eleven on your way to heaven? Can I get 12 that know you ain't going to hell? Hey! Hey! Ah! Well, I apologize. I said I apologize for getting so loud. But I told y'all last time I was here, when you praise God, you ought to get loud with it. Because the Bible said, make a joyful, a joyful what? Noise. And you can't make noise quietly. Praise God. Jesus transformed this man. When Peter reached his hand, touched him, lifted him up. And I noticed this man got everything he needed on the outside of the temple and once ministry took place in that man outside of the temple the first place that he went was to the inside where he hadn't been able to go for all of these years. He went on inside, praising God, leaping, and praising God. Oh, that same Christ that lifted that man outside of the temple can live for you today. He's available to you. We're standing together. Brothers, if y'all don't mind, I want to give me that total praise again. Give me that total praise. Lord, 
I will lift mine eyes to the hill. We're extending the invitation now. If you're in this room today, and even if you're looking in virtually, if you're looking in virtually today on any social media platform, get in touch with this church and allow them to know if you're making a commitment to Christ today, let them know that you are doing that today. That you're receiving Christ as your Lord and your Savior if you've never known him in such a way before. But if you're in this room, in the sanctuary, and if you are outside of Christ, I invite you to come. You can walk right down here to this altar. If you need a church home, Mount Zion is a mighty good place to be brought up and nurtured in the Lord. Come on down. Come on down. Give the Lord a hand, somebody.
how we bless the name of the Lord for his word for all of his people thank you Mount Zion for receiving me today may God bless and may God keep you is my prayer well I think that's about all the remarks I got, Brother Beverly. Thank God for his word. Thank God for all of you. Can you look to the Lord now for the benediction? Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless, without spot or wrinkle before the glory of his presence with exceeding joy. To him be glory, honor, dominion, majesty, and power now and forevermore. Through Jesus our Lord we pray. All who agree said amen. 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 amen.